You think your life is hard? I'm a high school junior wearing size 13 Nikes. Men's size 13 Nikes. Beat that. Oh, come on, Netflix. You're just... You're just making it too easy. The latest in what seems to be a never-ending line of shitty teen rom-coms from Netflix, the creatively named Tall Girl is, surprise surprise, about a girl who is cursed with the horrific, life-changing deformity of being tall. Oh my god! But she's not... she's not even that tall, though. I'm baffled as to how they managed to make an hour and 40 minute movie based on this premise. After all, that is a pretty tall order. But what they produced has no redeeming value. In what's described as a comedy, there aren't many laughs, with most of the jokes falling flat due to their poor execution. The soundtrack makes very little sense and is often outright annoying, which, for a film set in New Orleans, is a bit insulting. The characters are underdeveloped and unsympathetic, and actually get less sympathetic as the film goes on. And not only is the premise ridiculous, but the plot feels like it wanders aimlessly for an hour and a half, with a bunch of stuff that's about as pointless as this shot of girls dancing in a corridor, then comes to a predictable conclusion with a generic message about body positivity which adds nothing new to the conversation, and an ending that left a bad taste in my mouth, quite frankly. The writing is pretty poor overall. You can tell this was the writer's first rodeo, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was the writer's first draft. For example, the film opens with a metaphor as subtle as a cricket bat in the anus. Well, maybe he would find acceptance if he wasn't such a know-it-all? I think his showing off his intelligence is just a way of protecting himself. Which is kind of tragic, because his alienation is the source of his strength, but then also... But it's also the source of his problems. Do, do you suppose it's about her? Do you suppose it's about her, guys? I'm gonna need a big think on this one! Metaphors based on literature are a staple of this genre, but aside from this bit at the start, she doesn't demonstrate her intelligence, and it's never the source of her issues. So is this a metaphor about her at all? It's either confusing or incompetent, and that's just the opening seconds. There are big chunks of the film I'll have to skim over because they're just so boring and unnoteworthy, but trust me, I've still got plenty to say. About this film that was... clearly... meant for me. The film follows Jodie, whose actress is most famous for her stint on Dance Mums, although you'd think spending all that time around so much drama would have given her better acting skills. Jodie is our tall girl, but just how tall is she? Six foot one. Wait, six foot one? Really? Is that it? Why was this film made? Sure, she's above average height for a girl, but six foot one is not outlandishly tall. But according to the film, it makes her akin to a circus freak. You think your life is hard? I'm a high school junior wearing size 13 Nikes. Men's size 13 Nikes. Beat that. I mean... If you insist... You're a white, straight, intelligent, pretty blonde woman from a middle-class family with a good education. However will you cope? The film doesn't explain why she's taller than both of her parents, and she suffers no medical problems as a result of her height. She never even bangs her head on anything. Her older sister inherited allergies, which by default means that she's had to overcome more obstacles than Landstrider over here. The only inconveniences she suffers as a result of being tall are not being able to find the right size shoes, having a smaller dating pool, and being teased by her peers. I'm coming at this from the opposite perspective, because I'm what you might refer to as a little short for a stormtrooper. And at the risk of sounding like a bitter incel, I can guarantee you that short men have it worse in all these departments, especially dating. It's actually... really depressing. And at its worst, it can turn you into this c Why is it okay for women to say, oh, you're five feet on dating sites? You should be dead. That's okay! Ugh. Whereas a tall girl is far more likely to find a partner willing to hit that, as Jodie does three of them in the film. As for the teasing, I won't say it's nothing, but it is fairly petty. Well, how's the weather up there? How's the weather up there? How's the weather up there? Are these really the worst tall insults these teenagers could think of? How about... Have you by any chance heard of the High Elves? Do you know where I can score some drugs? Because you look like you're high all the time. Your vagina must be as long as the Channel Tunnel. Come on, at least try to be creative. Aside from being intelligent, which she doesn't utilise much, Jodie doesn't have much of a personality. Unlike Sierra Burgess, she doesn't use her intelligence to respond to people who mock her. Her friend Farida has to stand up for her, which, if anything, undermines her and makes it worse. 
Jody does sometimes self-deprecate, but it never comes across as funny, more like bitter and resentful. Overall, she's pretty moany and unlikable, especially when you consider that she does nothing to take advantage of her height. Why doesn't this girl do sports? She'd absolutely kill it in basketball or volleyball, and her pointy face would surely give her a natural advantage on the swimming team. Having her become good at a sport would have been a good way to turn the negatives of her height into positives, and have her character develop as she breaks out of her shell. But this doesn't happen, and it's a wasted opportunity. In fact, she doesn't really do anything that makes her special. It's just because when you're good at something, other people tend to want to watch you do it, and I don't need to give people another reason to look at me. That doesn't make sense, because people are going to look at you anyway, but if they're watching you do what you're good at, they're not going to care how tall you are. This should have been the message of the film, but it isn't. But that's for later. Anyway, we're soon introduced to her other friend, Dunkelman, who's a great deal shorter than her and has been in love with her for years. Remember how in Not Another Teen Movie there's that character that's deep in the friend zone with the leading lady and is mocked relentlessly throughout the film? Dunkelman is that character. He almost perfectly embodies the trope that that movie was taking the piss out of, but here it's unironic and somehow even worse. He's really creepy, is constantly hitting on her using terrible pickup lines, and keeps trying to persuade her to go out with him even after she's repeatedly turned him down. Like, why is she even still friends with him at this point? This is so inappropriate and weird as hell. The poster's a dead giveaway. He even looks like a pervert. Oh, but it gets a lot worse. And just wait until you find out why he carries that stupid milk crate around instead of using a bag like a normal human being. You can probably guess, but it doesn't make it any better. Because of the crate, I'm going to refer to him as Milk Boy from now on, because I need to derive what amusement I can from this situation. Anyway, she won't go out with him, not because he's creepy as f**k, but because going out with someone shorter than her would only draw more attention to her height. And dating a guy who's shorter than me would just draw more attention to how much of a freak I am. Wait, but... Half the guys in the school are shorter than you are. Hence my conundrum. But then half of the boys are taller than you, so what's the issue? As if to answer her wet dreams, tall, smart and handsome Swedish exchange student Stig walks in. He has no charisma, his Swedish accent is awful, and his eyebrows are very disconcerting. But she falls for him anyway. He didn't even look at me, okay? It's the first time in my life that I've ever wanted someone to look at me, and he doesn't. Are you telling me that he's the only tall, intelligent, good-looking guy she's ever encountered? Her standards must be higher than her. He ignores her, because Sweden is full of tall people, so Jodie has to face the reality that being tall is not a personality trait. Liz, you're the worst. Go get him! Ah, uh, forever alone. Ah yes, I too remember that meme, from 2010. How do you do, fellow kids? There's a hot bitch, because of course there is, but she's the most underdeveloped and boring version of the mean girl trope I've ever seen. Her personality really is as shallow as she exists to be a bitch and compete with tall girl. And that's why I want to be just like Taylor Swift when I grow up. Taylor Swift? More like Taller Swift. <laughs> Why don't I think of that one? Hot bitch Kimmy moves in on Stieg, while Milkboy tries to dissuade Jody from even trying. Your tall gene and his tall gene creates a zygote in your belly the size of an above average sized watermelon. That would mean that that puppy's coming out cesarean. That's... not how that would work. Because the baby will have plenty of room inside her long vagina, duh! By some cruel twist of fate, it turns out that Stieg will be staying at Milkboy's house. He didn't know about this because his mum wanted it to be a surprise? What the fuck, mum? Why wouldn't you tell him? Especially since they have to share a room for the entire year. I'm starting to see where some of his issues with boundaries come from. Jodie enlists the help of her beauty pageant winning older sister, Harper, whose actress is also famous, apparently. I don't know, I'm too old for this sh**. Okay, for the next three weeks, if you see me eating carbs, I need you to slap me across the face. No, I'm not doing that. Okay, and since when did you start watching carbs? Since teen Miss Louisiana? I'm not taking any chances. She's been winning beauty pageants since she was six, and now she started to care about carbs? Are you fing kidding me? Jody mentions that she's after an exchange student, and Harper starts talking about the time she went after an exchange student, making it sound like she was in fing Vietnam. If you want a guy to notice you, you'd have to be willing to go all the way. I don't think you're willing to go all the way. Do you think you're ready to go all the way? I don't even know what you're talking about. And you just answered your own question. All right, calm down, Patton. It's not the Battle of the Bulge. It's only the Battle of His Bulge. Milk Boy refuses to be friends with Steak because he doesn't want his incel rage to be triggered to the point of murder. But Steak's fine because all these girls go and sit with him at the exact same time. So Hot Bitch uses her Jedi mind tricks to scare them off. 
He and Jodie exchange looks, but Jodie wusses out of going over, much to Milk Boy's delight. Despite her sister almost accidentally killing her, which would have made the film far more interesting, Jodie decides that it's time to get serious. So they have the mandatory makeover montage, which is rendered completely moot after Kimmy's friend prank calls her pretending to be Stieg, Kimmy says she'll never be pretty, and Jodie just goes with it, ignoring all the advice and effort her family just wasted on her. In order to avoid Kimmy and her lackeys, Jodie hides through a door and runs into Stieg playing the piano badly, and they bond over some questionable singing. I've never been in love before. I thought my heart was safe. I thought I knew the score. I need you to slap me across the face. This does give Jodie an opportunity to play the piano, her one and only talent that she will not make use of again for the rest of the film. This is my girlfriend, Kimmy. Girlfriend? Yeah, girlfriend. Girlfriend. Had the talk last night, made it a fish. Who the f actually talks like this? She warns Jodie to stay away from her man, and Jodie just goes, yeah, all right, fine, which Kimmy doesn't expect, so she gets flustered and storms off. Back at home, Jodie's parents have invited a club of tall people round to try and make her feel like less of a freak, but they're all weird, so she's not having it. What she does have is a tantrum at her parents' bumbling, if well-intentioned efforts. Don't you realize? That, that every time you try to make me feel more normal, you just end up making me feel like more of a freak. What do you mean every time? This one thing is literally all he's done so far? She contemplates height reduction surgery. Apparently it's only available in India and is a long and painful process. Just like getting tech support then. She gets another call and reacts angrily thinking it's another prank, but it's actually Stig this time. And, uh, and, um, this really is Stig, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Eh, uh, overdone, but it could have been funny if done well. He invites her over to watch a musical. This is weird because he's inviting her round to a house in which he himself is a guest, and he has a girlfriend. You really like crossing those international boundaries, don't you, mate? She goes round to Milk Boy's house to be greeted by his erection. Milk Boy tries as hard as he can to cockblock them until Clueless Stig invites him to sit with them. Jesus, man, at what point tonight are you going to start wearing her skin? Are you serious? Being tall is great. Being a tall guy is, is great, but... When you're a tall girl, it's, it's the only thing that people see. That's because you're boring! On the way back to her place, they end up making out. Steve confesses what happened, so a jealous milk boy manipulates him into rejecting Jody. Look, man, Jody, Jody's great. Yeah. And, you know, she smells... Like a late August midday sun shower, and she's got skin like sweet, buttery whipped cream. But, but. Dude, I was only joking about the skin. Like, fuck! You see, for entirely self serving reasons, Milk Boy has helped Stieg realize that he's gone from being the dorky kid in Sweden to being the Alpha Chad of New Orleans. And he likes it. So when Milk Boy convinces him to stay with Kimmy so that he can keep being the popular kid, Stieg accepts his reasoning. I could still be friends with Yodi, right? Uh, uh, I, really? Uh, no? I, I just think you might be... that might lead her on. You mean the exact same thing she's been doing to you? Jodie's not happy being the other woman, despite her friend enabling her. Am I a terrible person? No, you're not. She is. She doesn't deserve him. You do. You see what I mean about these characters becoming more unlikable? But on Milk Boy's advice, Stieg brutally gives her the cold shoulder, and then Milk Boy does some awful impressions. Yeah. It's like you've been braising that turkey for 15 minutes. Where's the lamb sauce? <laughs> I mean, none could make better sushi than this, and she's blind! What are you? I don't know! An idiot sandwich! <laughs> Fucking useless sack of shit! Kimmy's friend takes a liking to him, which should be his opportunity to stop obsessing over Jody and find someone more suitable. Should. Jody argues with him about his conversation with Stieg and calls him out on his manipulative bullshit, but neither of them are fully in the right here. You know, you may find this hard to believe, but I care about you. And I just want to make sure that you don't get hurt. Alright, credit where it's due, that did put a smile on my face. Back at Milk Boy's house, Jody reluctantly persuades Stieg that they should break it off and just be friends. So what are you gonna do about Stieg? Nothing. He made his choice. And uh, no he didn't. You made it for him, remember? In that scene that just happened? 
Kimmy comes over to tell her that her friend, whose name is Schnipper, maybe because he was circumcised, I don't know, has started fancying her since she did the bare minimum of a makeover. Jody decides to go on a triple date with them all in the hopes of making Steak jealous. Farida tells her how bull <coughs> that entire situation is, Jody doesn't take being called out very well, and loses the only friend who hasn't constructed a shrine out of her toenail clippings. They go on the triple date to an escape room, and instead of escaping, they all start making out. Jody has a moment of clarity and realises how stupid and awkward this is, and how wrong it is to go out with someone in order to make someone else jealous, and then tries to leave. From the room they haven't escaped from yet. Well, if you're gonna go, go. I'm trying. Eh, there was an attempt. Steak tells Jody that he's going to break up with Kimmy that night in order to be with her. She invites him to her sister's pageant, and then they're going to go to a party at Milk Boy's house, because every teen movie needs a house party. But he doesn't show up, apparently because he got stuck helping out with the party. Because some guy takes a selfie with him, she assumes that he was never intending to break up with Kimmy because he likes being the popular kid. I mean, she does turn out to be right about that, but she really had to jump to reach that conclusion. She goes home and reconciles with her dad over their shared love of the piano. I'm not counting this as making use of her talent because she barely does anything. You know how I said that Milk Boy should have got with Kimmy's friend and that this could have led to an interesting character arc about how he realises that there are other fish in the sea and then gets over Jody? Well, he fucked that up royally by confessing that he still loves Jody. I guess I'm just not her type. So you're gonna spend the rest of your life waiting until you are her type? If that's what it takes, then, then yeah. Holy sh! that's pathetic. The next day, he sneaks into her room and starts stroking her face, immediately getting what he deserves. He apologises for not being a particularly good friend recently, and he's brought her a pair of high heels. Because earlier she said that they don't make high heels in her size. She did also say that she wouldn't wear heels if she did have them, but okay. High heels. Mm-hmm. They're from a specialty drag queen store called Scream Queens. <laughs> Oh, was that not meant to be funny? He wants her to have the heels so that when she meets someone she likes, she has a pair to wear. From anyone else, I'd say this represented his acceptance that they will only ever be friends, and that he wants her to be happy regardless. But based on everything he's done so far, it comes across as a manipulative attempt to buy his way in while she's vulnerable. Kimmy's friend sends her a video she took at the party, which shows Stieg talking shit about her and loudly denying he liked her. She's, uh, secretly in love with me. <laughs> what? Confessing love? Dude, that's like totally lame. Like, I'm definitely not in love with Jody. Hang on a second, what? You went on one half date with her that went badly and now you're in love with her? What the fuck's wrong with you? Milk Boy steps in with his milk crate to defend her honor. Why is the camera changing position in the video? It's meant to be filmed on her phone, right? Did she fucking teleport? This leads to a really pathetic fight, which is how he ended up with the black eye. Homecoming is apparently that same night, because what's a teen movie without one of those things? So she shows up in a dapper suit which makes her look even taller, and gives a bog-standard speech about how it's okay to be tall, and how she's accepted her height. So go ahead and, and keep making fun of me, keep calling me names, keep asking me how's the weather up there, because... I can take it. Well, obviously you can't, given the way you've acted so far, and the fact that you're even giving a speech like this. But what did she go through to reach this point? What happened to make her realise that being tall is fine and become comfortable in her own skin? Nothing. This moment hasn't been earned. At all. And it's honestly one of the lamest of these speeches that I've seen, especially considering that its message about body positivity is coming from someone who doesn't have a physical problem. Stieg realises he's been a dick, runs after her to apologise, and ask if they can start over. But she's like, nah. Instead, she goes round to Milk Boy's house and reveals that she's so impressed with him white knighting her that he now qualifies as boyfriend material. But you know, the only major sticking point is the milk crate. I knew the day would come where I would need it and I wanted to be ready. Ready for what? Yes, this is actually why he's been carrying around that f***ing milk crate for years, in the hope that he would eventually get to use it for this exact purpose. How is this not a massive red flag? <laughs> How is this a film that's been made? Remember that he's been inappropriate and downright creepy towards her for years? going out of his way to prevent her from ending up with the boy she actually likes. And her ending up with him is what the film considers to be a happy ending. That's right, gentlemen. If you orbit around Milady long enough, pester and manipulate her, and publicly defend her honour using violence, she'll fall at your feet. 
This f***ing film. Out of all of these Netflix teen romances that I've seen, I think this one has to be the worst. It was definitely the most boring, and it feels like it had the least amount of effort put into it. The premise is stupid, many of the jokes are unoriginal and unfunny, none of the characters were interesting or worth getting invested in, the positive message of the film is so bland and generic as to be completely unhelpful, and the ending is just the worst. At least with Sierra Burgess, she suffered at least some social consequences for her shitty behaviour. But the creepy milk boy is rewarded with pussy. Many of us know a real life milk boy, and we really shouldn't be encouraging them. And Stieg still has to live with him for the rest of the school year? That's, uh... That's gonna be awkward. So yeah, in conclusion, Tall Girl was a wasted opportunity, and, you know, a bit shit. Why do I do this to myself again? Oh yeah. Internet fame. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching, folks. Big shout out once again to all my lovely supporters on Patreon and to my channel members here on YouTube. If you like my stuff, consider becoming a patron or channel member yourself. Make sure to follow me on stuff for updates and occasional funny shit. Links to everything is down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.